How does someone become president or vice president of the United States? Normally, it's by way of a complicated and lengthy election process, right? But in the unusual case of Gerald Ford, it was through a set of scandals that were entirely unrelated to him. Born in Nebraska in 1913, from the very beginning, Ford's life would take a series of unexpected twists and turns. He was born Leslie Lynch King Jr., but his name was changed to Gerald R. Ford when his mother remarried. He was a star football player in college and was offered contracts with two NFL teams, but decided to study law. Then he enlisted in the Navy and fought in the Second World War. But it was in the ruthless world of politics that Ford's career really took off. Elected from Michigan to Congress in 1949, he served for almost 25 years and rose to become House Minority Leader. Less than a year after Richard Nixon's re-election, Vice President Spiro T. Agnew resigned amidst a flurry of scandals involving bribery and tax evasion. Nixon chose Ford, a man with a squeaky clean image, as his new VP. And then, within a year, Nixon resigned too, rather than be impeached for the role he played in the infamous Watergate scandal and cover-up. And Ford was catapulted into the Oval Office as the new Commander-in-Chief. Despite his best efforts to prop up the country's ailing economy and the support he received for the U.S. military withdrawal from Vietnam, Ford ultimately failed to convince the electorate that he was the best man for the top job during the 1976 presidential campaign. They chose Democrat Jimmy Carter instead, making Ford the only American to become vice president and then president without ever winning a national election. Do you think a president should be able to hold office without a national election? 